Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today is taken from the Old Testament book of Daniel, chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there's nothing like hearing a good motivational speech. We see it, don't we? We've, we've experienced those for ourselves. Maybe you think of some of your favorite movies and that scene that you have, that beleaguered group of people, the underdog, here's that speech right before the fi final scene, right before the finale. Whether it's on the field of battle or the field of play. You probably have some of those speeches kind of ingrained, or at least portions of them ingrained in your mind. I've heard things like, remember the Alamo. Texans take to the field of battle. Or from years ago, back in the 70s, we are Marshall for the university football team. You think of D-Day. We can accept nothing than full victory. Or maybe from one of your favorite movies, they can take away our lives, but they cannot take away our freedom. And then the crowd erupts in cheers. As we stand here today, November 2015, we don't have soldiers surrounding the city. We don't have an overwhelming force ready to breach the gates, ready to tumble our ramparts. We don't have the freedoms that we hold dear, the freedoms that we've known all of our lives be re being ready to be all wiped away from us. And yet there is a battle going on. Even if it's not a physical one, there's a spiritual battle going on. Satan has mounted his forces, his battalion of evil angels, not only to assault us, but to do battle with God's holy angels, all in an attempt to try and drive God's church out of existence and all those who pledge their allegiance to Jesus to be destroyed. And so as we study God's word together today on this Saints Triumphant Sunday, it's good to look back at these words from Daniel. Because the people that Daniel was speaking to were facing some rough times, much the way we are today. And yet, God's going to point to us, to his word, and he's going to let us in on a secret. Jesus wins. And so as we study God's word together today, we are encouraged to rise and shine. Now if you look at the book of Daniel, it has some things in there that make you wince. Think about some of those stories that you know from the book of Daniel. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Because they stood up for their faith, because they wouldn't worship an idol, they were going to be burnt to a crisp in the king's furnace. Remember Daniel, because he prayed faithfully to his God three times a day, he was about to be the lunch of some hungry lions. Well then, later on in the book of Daniel, we hear God's messenger talking about the future, of what things were in store for the people of Israel. That time between 400 B.C. and the coming of Jesus, it was going to be a time of testing. It was going to be a rough time. There was going to be murder and intrigue and assassinations, and God's people were going to be tested. And then God comes along with this message. He picks up in chapter 12 with a message of joy, a message of encouragement. And so as bad as things were, things couldn't get much worse for the people of Israel because they were already in captivity for decades. They were already there without their freedoms to live where they wanted, to do what they wanted to do. They had had their freedom of, re the freedom of religion to worship God unmolested had been stripped from them. And so their throw, the, the temptation was to throw their hands up in despair and say, God, what more can happen to us? It's already as bad as it can get, isn't it? If you look at the chapters just before this, 
Daniel informs them, things are going to get a whole lot worse. We live in some scary times, don't we? Things that are going on in our world, things are kind of scary. The rhetoric against Christians seems to be ramped up recently. Turning up that volume, but it's more than just talk. There are actions that go with it. Think about the atrocities that are coming out of France from this past weekend. You see actions done in the name of a false god. Terrorizing a nation, terrorizing a world. And the temptation is to say, God, what is going on? Have you forgotten about your people? How can you let something like this go on? And it's not as though these things aren't creeping at our doors. That this can't come to our nation, that it can't come to us here. Christians are being targeted. Christian faith, Christian beliefs, Christian morals are said to be wrong and unloving. And other things, that, other things are promoted. Where the Christian morality is becoming an oddity and a rarity rather than the norm or the given. But should this surprise us? The Apostle Paul told us, when the coming of the end of times is here, things are going to be ugly. Listen to what he told to his young colleague Timothy. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. That description of the last days is an ugly one. But don't you see yourself describing that a little bit? Because who of us here could claim to be blameless? How often haven't we used our tongues to be slanderous? How often haven't we been frugal with our forgiveness rather than pouring it out to other people? How often haven't we been rash rather than righteous? And so as we listen to those words from Paul, how he describes how people are going to be in the end times, we kind of look at ourselves in that mirror and say, that's an ugly description of what I am like. Because I do all of those things. I have a form of godliness, don't I? We all do that, don't we? We, we pretend to be these godly people, but then we deny God's power when we fail to trust in him. Well, Daniel warned that these things were going to happen. Things were going to get a whole lot worse than what they were. He says there will be a distress. There will be a time of distress, such as not has happened from the beginning of nations until then. As the end of the world nears, we're going to see things unlike anything we've ever seen before. Things are bad in our day, they're going to get a whole lot worse as that end comes ever closer. But then, even though all that's happening, God says, I want you to point, I want to point you to some comfort. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. Satan and his minions are active, they are on the attack, but you and I aren't left alone. God sends his angels to do battle for us, to protect us. If you look back in chapter 10, we are first introduced to Michael. He's described as this angelic prince who was working behind the scenes. As the ungodly nation of Persia was working, here Michael and the other angels are working to thwart Satan's plans through his minions. And so God says, don't worry. I'm sending my angels who will protect you. They're going to do battle to protect you as the end nears. And then he offers further comfort. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust, <clears throat> multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Some do everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. 
even though the attacks of Satan continue, Michael and the angels will protect us. Because God says, these are my messengers sent to do you good, sent to do my bidding. And then there's that promise. Even though death comes to all people, there's a promise of deliverance. Those who have their names written in the book of life will be delivered. Those who have their names etched in God's manuscript will be delivered. I want you to think for a moment. The White House has state dinners, and to get into one of those things, you need a personal invite, don't you? Not just anyone can go there. If you're not on the list, you don't belong. Or there's VIP clubs that say only these certain people are allowed in. And if your name's not on the list, you're left out in the cold. Well, not to be on God's book, not to be on his list, is worse than not getting dinner, worse than being left onto the streets. It's being left out of heaven. He says, those who have their names written in the book, those who have their names found written there will be delivered. And for those who don't, they will face shame and everlasting contempt. There won't be any relief. God will say to them, you wanted nothing to do with me now, so I'm not going to have anything to do with you then. He's going to give them something that they're not going to want. Because what he's going to give them is what they brought on themselves. An eternity of separation from him. They wanted to be separated from him. Now he says, you're going to be separated from me for eternity. So then the question for you today is, are you on the list? Do you find your name written in the book? Well, think of how we've described ourselves already. God says, I want you to be perfect. I want you to be holy as I am holy. And yet when you think back to that description that the Apostle Paul had of the end of times, all of those lists of things of the way people are going to be and you suddenly realize, you know what, I still do all those things. That can be a crushing thing. Because those things are enough to disqualify me, to get my name not on the list. And yet that's why God comes along with this comforting message from Daniel. He comes along to give us the assurance. Even though those sins are true to each and every one of us, even though we've lived apart from God so much and so often, he has a message for us today. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life. Mankind has been ruled by death ever since sin entered the world. Death has reigned and claimed soul after soul after soul because that's the result of sin. But it wasn't until the one who came as the resurrection and the life came to destroy death, came to give deliverance from death. Jesus promised that those who die believing in him have eternal life. All of those things that should be counted against us, all of those sins that entangle us, ensnare us, trip us up on a daily basis, Jesus took to his cross. He provided that element of perfection that God demands for us. That element of perfection that we need to be able to stand before him. That element of perfection that allows our names to be written through the blood of Christ into his books. And so now as we Think of all the sins that we commit on a daily basis. Those don't drive us to despair, but rather to rejoice. Because God has given us the salvation we need. He tells us, you will rise. You will be with me. You will dwell with me forever. You know, by nature we foolishly wanted nothing to do with him. But by God's grace... He has made us wise for salvation. He has made us wise so that now we can shine with the brightest of splendor. He has made us wise for salvation to know that we are well aware of our sin. We are well aware that we can do nothing about our sin on our own. But we are now well aware that Jesus has done everything for us. 
He says, you will rise and you will shine with the brightest of glory because you will be in heaven with me. Motivational speeches are great, aren't they? They get your juices flowing, they get you motivated, they get you excited. They give you that shot in the arm to get ready to take the field. Well, God says, look at around you. You are the underdog here in this world because of all the bad stuff that's happening. Well, look at the joy you have. You have my promise that I will not leave you or forsake you. You have the promise that I will send my messengers to guard you as Satan tries to attack. But more than that, you have my promise that you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and you are part of that saint's triumphant who will stand before God in all eternity. Your names, our names, are written in the book of life. Amen. Please rise.